Welcome to your Artsy Girl podcast. I am your host, Christina Carrer. This is a podcast about art, poetry, writing, and anything about creativity. Sit back, relax, and get your dose of brain food to get your creative juices flowing. Welcome to episode 47. I wanted to close out this year, 2019, uh, with a very special guest. He was very pivotal of establishing Filipino-American poetics. His name is Nick Carbo. He's a Filipino-American writer from Legaspi Albay, Philippines. Carbo writes poetry, essays, and edits magazines and anthologies. He is primarily known for his book of poetry titled Secret Asian Man, which won the Asian American Writers Workshop's Reader's Choice Award. Carbo spent the majority of his career developing Filipino-American literature as a genre and is credited by scholars such as Elisabetta Marino as playing an instrumental role in its modern conception. Through his anthologies, Returning a Borrowed Tongue, Babaylan and Pinoy Poetics, he consolidates both Filipino and Filipino-American experiences. Some of his published works include Running Amok, 1992, El Grupo McDonald's, 1995, Secret Asian Man, 2000, and Illusion Dawn, 2004, Chinese Japanese What Are These, 2009, and his anthologies include Returning a Borrowed Tongue, 1995, Babaylan, 2000, and Pinoy Poetics, 2004. Everyone, please welcome my next featured guest, Nick Carbo. Hi, Nick. Welcome to the show, and thank you for agreeing to come on to discuss your work and your creative process with me in the audience. Glad to be here. Thank you. Um, I have known you now for quite some time, and just like Eileen Tabios, Barbara Jane Reyes, and Luisa Gloria, you have been one of the main folks promoting Filipino-American poetry and literature. In fact, in my last talk on the panel, Bulasan's Children at the Philam Annual International Filipino-American Writers Festival in San Francisco this past October, I credited you and Eileen Tabios for bringing Filipino-American voices to the forefront since the 90s in early 2000s with Filipino-American anthologies, which you've edited and co-edited. How did these anthologies come about and what was your objective with them? Oh, uh, the anthologies were because when I started off as a as a poet, you know, going to an MFA program, I didn't see any f other Filipino poets or any uh, published out there. And I said, hey, am I going to go into this field where there's nothing? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I why don't I just publish other Filipino poets? Why not? Yeah. And they said, the more the merrier, right? You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, so I did all this research. I did all, the, I mean, I went into, you know, the early internet where there were gopher holes. Right. You know, <laughs> and remember that. And I went into and different libraries and started researching, you know, Filipino poets. And I actually found some, you know, out there that were published early on, you know, like uh, God, Jose Garcia Villa, mm -hmm. I mean, and Viam Gonzalez and, uh, you know, Bienvenido Santos, and then, uh, and then Carlos Bulusan. I mean, these poets were published like in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Right. In this country. And there used to be a whole bunch of Filipino poets uh, published then. And then suddenly, I mean, uh, they waned and they probably died. Yes, they died mm -hmm. a lot. And then nothing, nothing. And then so and then I said, Oh well, well, I have to I have to resurrect them in in a way. Mm -hmm. And I said, Okay, yeah, let's do an anthology. That's the best way to get um marketed, you know. So how many anthologies um were did you do? Oh oh uh, I began with uh, returning a bar tongue. Mm -hmm. And that was in 95. Right. <laughs> wow, that's a long time ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like 20, 30 years ago. It was like, mm -hmm. wow. And then um, then I, I uh, the second one I did was Papaylan. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, that was the one, uh, Filipino writers. That's the one where you, where you showed up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, I published you, you there. Okay. 
So let me let me backtrack because I swear to goodness, you did you didn't just only uh, you, um, publish you know Filipino American writers, but in the earlier days, you actually reached out to them. In fact, you saw one of my what happened was I remember you mm -hmm. um, saw one of my poems in some obscure online ma magazine, mm -hmm. and the editor contacted me and said that you were. We wanted to reach out to me, and hence, lo and behold, then uh, you know you asked me to submit to the the anthology, which I was so moved because I just you know started off writing poetry then, mm -hmm. and what you did was really pivotal, I think, for Filipino American writers and poets. It was almost like bumping around in the dark, you know? I was just like, okay, I'm trying to find my voice. I didn't have anyone to really identify with. So when I was sat on that panel this past October, and they were talking about, you know, the younger generation talking about, oh, there's so many, you know, it's so great to see. Now we're just, you know, a whole slew of Filipino American writers and poets. And and that's when I said, yeah, um, I had mentioned you and Eileen because there was a wave in the 70s also, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, yeah. The but, Bay Area uh, poets, yeah. Right, they were, right. Yeah. Then it got resurrected again in the 90s, attributed to you and, um, of course, Eileen. I, I made mention that it's because of, you know, you and uh, Eileen and others who have brought us all into a collective. That was the major movement, I think, that, well, that was you know, integral. You know what helped? What's um, that? Because before that, um, the, my first anthology, Returning in Barak Tong, I, I actually wrote people letters. I mean, in snail mail. So I yes. had to, I have to write the like to the Philippines and wait back, you know, like wow. Uh, and then also here in the uh, around the United States, and but then uh, slowly I uh, I I started using the media, the internet. Mm -hmm. The internet really helped Filipino American poetry because the fir one of the first things that we did. Was uh, start uh, established a um, uh, e uh, what's your email group? Yes. Uh, uh, news uh, a group uh, where uh, what's called it was called Flips. Right, the so, listserv. It was yeah, the listserv. listserv. Yeah, uh -huh. listserv. Yeah, that's one of the early tools. I was of the so internet. on that. I mean, uh -huh. oh my goodness, I yeah. still have original emails from that. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> I know. So it, that was those were the wild day, uh, days of the internet, and, and things go back and forth. But but uh, suddenly we were able to um, communicate. Yes. With each other. I mean, could you imagine the days of uh, Carlos Bolosan and and Jose Garcia Villa? They didn't really write to each other. Right. You know. So they uh, were alone. You know. Yeah. They did yeah. it alone practically. Yes, yes. So, 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 so their careers were individual, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know they had their own little things that they did in their own little corners, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so what we're doing, I mean, we got together. We, I mean, the listserv was done with um, um, with um, Vince Cotera, uh, a wonderful poet, and also um, um, you know he brought everything, everyone together too, you know, mm -hmm. and um, he. He helped um, establish that listserv with me, right? And, right. And and there's there, there's early um, archives in there that you can <laughs> see all this all this stuff. But before we talk to about your work, mm -hmm. I, I read in your bio you come from uh, Filipino parents who were mm -hmm. you know impoverished and mm -hmm. like most Filipinos, um, my relatives as well, and you were inevitably adopted by you say Spanish Filipino parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It was in Legaspi Albay in the Philippines, uh, in Bicol region. I w um, actually, it's me and my sister were adopted. Okay. Uh, from that family, we grew up. So we grew up together, and first we lived in um, in a big house in Legaspi, and mm -hmm. then uh, and then we moved to Manila, and then in Manila we grew up there. We went to the international school in Manila. That's the uh, or had uh, all these uh, students from all over the world, which is wonderful. International a, school, right? Yeah, international school. 
Yep. And that's where uh, you went to the to uh, what was Wagner. that? Yeah, Wagner in in Clark Air Base. Yep. And there was another school in in Subic. Yeah. Right. The, the, so the, all all that all those schools were related. Yeah. And uh, we we did uh, we played sports against each other. Yep. And <laughs> uh, we kind of knew each other about each other in a way. Yeah. You know, and it, because yeah. it, it's a, for us, you and me, we grew up in a same sort of milieu. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and interesting that we did grow up with, you know, your school is called International School. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means it was um, a yeah. mixture of all different cultures. So that's how I felt growing up um, at Clark Air Force Base as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did this experience growing up like that uh, shape your perspectives in the aesthetic? In fact, do you have any poems that you'd like to share with us? Oh. Uh well, I'll start with that, uh, the, the Boy in Brutal Shorts. Okay. Which is, uh, you know, an early poem. Uh, it's one of the earlier poems I had. So it's um, The Boy in Blue Shorts, the screaming woman on the other side of our tall black gate would have thrown a rock at me. My maid, Rosita, sheltered me from the insults. Something about my being retarded and full of worms the woman nudged her, fun, her son forward, blue shorts, clean t-shirt, rubber slippers. She said her little boy was the one who would have been, oh, who, who should have been adopted. He was healthy. He looked about my age, four or five. We were both silent. I want to see the Mr. and the Mrs. They are making a big, big mistake. Rosita bolted the gate, took me by the hand. Those are bad people. Don't listen to them. I felt the crisp whiteness of her skirt all the way to all the way across the garden back to our house. So that poem it, uh, it just uh, talks about the twist of fate. I mean, mm. I, I could have easily been not adopted. This mm. other kid could have grown up <laughs> and uh, be, uh, you know. My, yeah, I, I got my that height, from that you know. scene. Oh my goodness! So this uh -huh. actually happened. Uh, yeah, or oh. or it's one of those memories that you know, right is probably embellished. But <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it, it did happen. And there and and my maid was there, and and she sheltered me from all that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you have an another one. Oh, another one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you want more? Do you have Do you have um, some that are kind of like um, from your uh, most recent? Uh, more le recent? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me read you the, uh, the directions to my imaginary childhood, and that's you know, related related to my childhood. But also, um, that's the one that was um, scrolled on a big screen on that during that YouTube con. I mean, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube. Yes. Okay. Wait. By Let's, Bono, you know. Before you get into that, I, uh -huh. I do want to make mention that your poem and I believe Bino Riolio's um, uh -huh. poems have and been then, selected. Go uh -huh. ahead and explain to us what happened here. Yeah. Um, uh, so I suddenly get this email from my publisher saying, oh, you two want to, want to use your one of your poems? And then I said, oh, wow, okay. And then I got in contact with them, and then and they wanted to use one of my poems. And they wanted to uh, – they've been uh, scrolling poems over on the screen just before the concert started. So, uh, so you know, keep people – people busy <laughs> okay <laughs> so well, that's, a, that's a novel idea actually yeah. it's spread poetry why not you know yeah so yeah. they found your work online or in a publication in your your book i don't know i i things like these um you know mysteries they you don't know how they they happen but wow you know, you know like so this know. is the poem uh, that that they asked they, you to share yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when so, is the when is the concert going to be? Oh no, the concert was a uh, December. Oh, it passed. Uh, yeah, it happened already. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Um. So here it is. Uh, okay. It's called Directions to My Imaginary Childhood. Okay. Um. If you stand on the corner of Mabini Street and Legaspi Avenue, 
wait for an orchid colored colored minibus with seven oblong doors. Open the fourth door. An oscillating electric fan will be driving. Tell her to proceed to the Escolta Diamond District. You will pass Manning Virai's bar, La Isla de los Ladrones bookshop, the Frederick Funston fish sauce factory. And as you turn left on the Calle de los Recuerdos, you will see Breton, Bataille, and Camus seated around a card table playing ab abecedarian dominoes. Roll down your window and ask them if Mr. Florante and Miss Laura are home. If the answer is yes, then proceed to Mo Noli Metanzere Park and wait for a nun named Maria Clara. Ma uh, Maria Clara. If the answer is je ne sais pas, then turn right into the parking lot of Cicatuna's supermarket <laughs> to buy a basket full of Lanzones fruit. Then get back to Calle de los Recuerdos until you reach the part that's lined with tungsten red Tuantama trees. On the right will be a house with an acknowledgments page and an index. Open the door and enter the page and look me in the eye. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, wow, wow. What a journey that was. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's more I, like surrealistic and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. That's what I was going to ask you. Who would you say uh, influenced, uh, were your earlier influences or, you know, that influenced your work? Well, yeah, there's many influences. Like, uh, uh that one, I would say, like um, Jose Garcia Lorca, mm -hmm. especially his um, um, Poeta in Nueva York mm -hmm. book. Well, oh, it's, it's it's amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. he wrote that in the third twenties, uh, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was New York, and uh, he captured uh, wonderful, wonderful parts of it, you know. And um, and that's how okay, I have. Uh, uh, surrealistic flair that comes out once in a while. Yeah, normally I'm usually a narrative poet. I can, you know, like the first poem mm -hmm. was, a, mm -hmm. was about uh, like a boy and all that stuff, uh, you know, being adopted and not being, you know, there. Uh, but uh, I, sometimes I like to throw images out there like that. Mm -hmm. um, you have some interesting leaps and associations too. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it kind of like the, like you said, the surrealist, surrealist leanings. Mm -hmm. How many books of poetry have you um, published already? Um, I, I, uh, at this point, I have four. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was um, El Grupo McDonald's. Mm -hmm. The second one was Secret Asian Man. And uh, uh, third was Andal Andalusian Dawn. Mm hmm and the last one was Chinese, Japanese, what are these? Yes. Explain that. That's your, when was that one published? Um, that one? was, that was published in 2009. The Chinese, Japanese it was a, like an insult yeah, to us kids mm -hmm. when we were growing up. Don't you, do you remember that? It was like mm -hmm. when they make that little face and then that. Yes, uh, yes. And in Japanese, what are these boobies, you know? Oh. <laughs> remember? And yeah. They, <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, so, out of uh, all of your books and publications, which one? I I know it's, this is a tough question, but which mm -hmm. ones are you the most that you are proud of? Most proud of? Um, I would say Secret Asian Man. Yeah, because that's that, the second that's, one. I, I heard yeah. about that one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was I I wrote in like almost in one whole um. Um, period. Like I, I was at the McDowell Colony, and you oh. have all this time to write. So it's like I, I was being influenced by other poets, by other artists, by um, um, composers. Everything, everything. So it was just a it was a wonderful time of writing, and and that's what happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you did get your doctorates, right? Um, no, I was, uh, or MFA. Uh, yeah. MFA okay. first, uh, at Sarah Lawrence. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. um, college. And that was, yeah, that was in 92. And then, mm-hmm. and then um, 2009, um, I went to uh, University of uh, Manchester in England, and I was working on a PhD there in, in poetry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As a poet and writer and visual artist myself, I, I, I want the audience to know that you are also a visual artist. Um, uh-huh. I've seen some of your artwork, and mm-hmm. I have to say they're quite impressive. I see that you, Ooh. yeah, Thank you like you. to experiment <laughs> with visual uh-huh. poetry. How did you feel drawn to explore these art forms? How did you discover it? Well, in poetry, we have something called um, as ephraxic poetry, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Poetry that um, um, writes uh, that's about painting, uh, certain paintings or uh, uh, certain artwork. And it it tries to sometimes um, imitate what that painting is all about, right? Mm-hmm. As it, uh, forget that. Let's like, why not throw paint on the on the canvas, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 explore color, you know, <laughs> color as metaphor, right? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, and also like text. Text on uh, on a painting on the canvas, right? Uh, and not just the text, but also just individual letters and how that looks, right? And and from that you can you can write poems from little little things like that. On, the, I mean, um, it's not just a mixture of the both uh, text and visual. It's it's uh, it's an alma- amalgamation. It's a let's say it's a tornado. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a tornado of art and and poetry together that gets mixed up and throws out and and it's thrown out. So and well, of course, you are also one of the. Uh, uh, I've seen your artwork too, <laughs> and it's very impressive too. Well, so thank you. <laughs> I like I like all the all the there are. Um, all these, I mean, not all, but I mean, there's 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 a few of us that have um, art careers and poetry careers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you sold uh, work too, right? Yeah, I've done. Yeah. I've exhibited. Exhibited. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I'm small time, but you I know, know, I've know. exhibited but... art, uh, some stuff. And in fact, um, uh, one of my exhibits are going to be, I think, this January at Eileen's. Um, gallery at her house uh-huh. at her home uh-huh. so I've, I have yet to complete that but that should be coming up soon but I just want to say I did see one of your pieces in fact it was like a it looked like almost like an installation that you did mm-hmm. um, it's as if you kind of created this installation of some sort that was like now Eileen has a uh, she creates po- poetic forms, right? You've heard mm-hmm. of that, like mm-hmm. pineapple and mm-hmm. stuff. But yeah. this this particular piece, I don't know if you recall. Um, well, I don't know if it's the one I'm thinking of, but it was almost like a um a letter game, but it was a art installation or some sort where the the viewer gets to participate or or, or play a, this this game. Is it? Am I right or am I way off base? Oh no, no, you're right. You're right. I mean, I that that's the whole premise of all my um, visual poetry, mm-hmm. it's like um, a viewer interaction, yes, uh, reader interaction, and hopefully the the poet can interact with the people too that way. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. And so it, it's a back and forth that uh, that um, makes everything tick. You know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's that's what I, I loved about um, learning uh, about you in that sense. I'm like, wow, you know, that's why I, I like to ask writers and poets in particular mm-hmm. if they do other art forms, because uh, some of us kind of stumble into these other art forms and find it, you know, that one art form feeds the other and vice versa and, and all that. Okay, so let's get back to where you said you, you went over to Europe and you, you uh-huh. studied for your PhD. And you also lived in Spain as well, didn't you? Uh-huh. And so tell us a little bit of how about that experience living in Europe. Um, uh, well, uh, Spain, uh, uh, we didn't live there no, continuously, but um, mm-hmm. we'd go there summer vacations. Yes. I mean, we'd spend... Uh, 
uh, months in Mallorca and, oh. and uh, Madrid, you know, Barcelona, all these places. Uh, it, 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 just to see all all the um, history. Yeah, <laughs> what, I, it's a very uh, for me. It, history was very, very important of all these places and mm-hmm. and getting to know the stories. And, um, Do you know how to speak Spanish? Oh yes, yes, yes. Hablo español. No mucho de veces, pero cuando puedo. I know when I can. When I can, I can speak Spanish. And well, actually, I I have a Spanish passport. I travel oh. with an EU passport, so I can go to all these other countries too. So yeah, it's. Uh, How did you get that? Do you get to get oh, that yeah. while because you? Because my my uh-huh. parents were uh, colonial Spanish, and oh. they were Spanish citizens. The whole so time. that's what that's what you meant about Spanish. I thought, okay, so when you said when I when I read that, I was like, okay, well, most of us have Spanish in us. So that's what I was like, in so. us, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I actually so. had the Spanish parents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, I, that's I had... where the connection is uh-huh. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So when did you come to the states then? Um, I actually. Uh, well, we could be come, coming for uh, summer vacation, uh, uh, but I came fully for um, um, college. I came to the States uh, 1984 to Bennington College. Mm. So that was uh, in Vermont. And I yes. went to see snow. That's and, cool. Yeah. yeah. And it had uh, like a, a, a like eight to one female to male ratio. I said, why not? Why not? <laughs> You stud- That's where you studied um, poetry, or was that your undergrad? Uh, yeah, I was exposed to uh, poetry and 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 visual art and yeah, music. Yeah, well, that's great liberal arts. Everything, yeah. College. yeah, yeah. Real, real progressive liberal arts college. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that's when you decided to um, pursue poetry more in depth and get your in a way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I was, yeah. So much, so much happening, you know. Yeah. Now, when you decided to um, do the Filipino American Writers Anthology, uh-huh. you were were you basically felt like you were you couldn't find others that were doing the same thing? Uh, Fili- other Filipino American writers also? Oh no! Um, well, actually, uh, there was another anthology that was. Um, that was uh, just published, um, Brown River, White Ocean by um, Luis Francia. Yeah. And uh, that was a, 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 another one that uh, that's, uh, inspired me also said, uh-huh. you know, I have to do a, a more contemporary uh, oh, Filipino see. poetry. That's why, you know, I, I, I chose people like you <laughs> early, <laughs> early growing up, you know, the yeah. younger poets, what he had um, was now uh, established mm. historical Filipino poets, I and see. then also some contemporary, uh, but mostly historical. So what I did was like uh, trying to get all these contemporary, you know, what, who were writing then now. Right. Well, I'm so glad you, you reached out to me because I don't know, you know, I don't, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, it's it's one of those opportunities. It definitely fueled me into like continuing on with poetry. So yeah. that I thank you for. And, and that's uh, that's that's what poets are supposed to do: help <laughs> each other. You know, <laughs> inspire. And that why are you doing your your pod- podcast? Well, I'm inspire paying it forward people. because yeah. um, great people yeah. like you have have helped us along the mm-hmm. way too. So, but before you go, I'd like to ask: mm-hmm. what uh, are your future goals? Keep writing poetry. I mean, uh, Are you not... working on a collection right now? Or... Uh, I think I'm. I'm working on a, a selected and new poems. Oh, great! Which is, yeah, like like the hits and some new poems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how far along oh, you are with that? You think? Uh, let's say. Let's say I'm. I'm supposed to supposedly <laughs> have a minus, manuscript already, but um, I might have a publisher for it already Yay! lined up. Um, oh wow! I won't Thank tell you what. I, I, okay, I won't that's, tell you that's all right. I, I yeah. I'm sure you'll make the announcement. <laughs> yeah, so that'll be my fifth book. You know, Yay. so awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. in the works. Yeah. Oh my god. And and maybe another anthology. We don't know. We don't know. 
yeah. <laughs> we yeah, well, mm-hmm. yeah, there there's more to choose from now. There's mm-hmm. gonna, there's a lot of uh folks out there now. Not, you know, not I know. like so much, but there's I, more. There's more I know. out I'm there. I'm excited of this new talent that just keeps coming up everywhere. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Nick, once again, I'd like to thank you so much for being my featured guest today. And along with everyone I've interviewed so far, I mm-hmm. hope to see you in person one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to thank yeah. you once again for doing well, all you've done in support for Filipino American Poetics. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Do keep me informed and let me know when your book comes out, okay? Yeah, yeah. I will. Great. Well, everyone, this is it for now. Please tune in for next week as I bring on another fabulous guest. In the meantime, have a creative and productive week. Bye, Nick. Bye. Bye.